Uh, I'd like to welcome with us today our guest speaker, Major General William Beidler, Commanding General, 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force, and Commander of USM uh, United States Marine Corps Forces Africa. Thank you, sir, for being with us today. Um, we really appreciate you taking time out for this, uh, for this very important event for us. This is our fifth year in, in hosting the Public Safety Awards Ceremony. And uh, I've attended several of these, and, and it is an important cer ceremony recognizing the public servants that they give so much to the communities in which they serve. They go beyond themselves to serve the public, and uh, certainly they deserve more than, than what they get in return. So this is a chance for us to show all of you that are here today how much we do appreciate you and what you do in your daily uh, lives and serving uh, the people of this great city and county. So thank all of you for being here and uh, we'll begin our, uh, our, our presentation today with the colors. Uh, with us today is the uh, Lejeune High School Marine Corps uh, Junior ROTC and they will, uh, they will present the colors and our national anthem. March, march. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets were clear the bombs bursting in air Thank you, that was terrific. <clears throat> and now I'd like to ask Lorette to please come forward to, to begin our uh, introduction. Lorette. Good 
Good afternoon. I'm Lorette Legan, the president of the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce, and I welcome you on behalf of our board of directors and our many fine sponsors to our fifth annual Public Safety Awards. I did mention the sponsors. They are on the back of your program. They are the ones that made this event possible. If you have the opportunity to purchase items or conduct business with these businesses, please thank them for sponsoring this event. At this time, I'd like to ask our um, past chair, Matt Raymond, to join me, and we're going to recognize our nominees. Our first nominee in the Emergency Medical Services Professional of the Year is William E. Camp. Right. The next is uh, Communications Professional of the Year nominees. First is Lisa Moran, telecommunicator for the City of Jacksonville Police Department. The next nominee and communications professional is Mary Darlene Sanderson, the E911 communicator for Onslow County Emergency Services. Next in the communication professional category, Charles Woods, Traffic Safety Program Director for MCI East Marine Corps Camps Base Camp Lejeune. Sorry. <laughs> now in the Firefighter Professional of the Year category, first, Captain Robert Jackson, Firefighter with the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. Also in the firefighter category, John Romero, driver operator for the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. The next category are law enforcement professionals of the year. First, call these two in tandem, David Hamill and Karen Scott. David is with NCIS Military Special Agents, and Karen is a detective with the City of Jacksonville Police Department. We can double row, that's okay. Our next nominee is Althea Smoten, police officer with MCI East Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune. Julia Paris, juvenile, uh, juvenile detective for the City of Jacksonville. <laughs> Patrol Officer Brian Stitz with the City of Jacksonville Police Department. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Master Trooper Richard W. West with the North Carolina State Highway Patrol. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our nominees. You were nominated by your peers and superiors, so you should be proud of yourself, and congratulations. Apologize filling in, and I missed a couple of our nominees. I apologize, Robin Wallace, a patrol officer for the city of Jacksonville. And sorry, Timothy, Timothy Sawyer, community officer, city of Jacksonville Police Department. Mm -hmm. 
bigger font next year. <laughs> but thank you. Um, and now to introduce our keynote speaker is uh, Jonathan Oates is listed on our program. Again, another one at home in bed with the flu, but someone is filling for him. Thank you to Todd Battaglia, agent special. He's assistant special agent in charge of NCIS. Hey, good afternoon to all. Once again, Todd Battaglia, and I'm Assistant Special Agent in Charge over at the NCIS Field Office over on campus in North Carolina. Uh, first, thanks for having me here today. Uh, it's an honor, a uh, distinct privilege to be able to uh, get up in front of you all and introduce uh, Major General Bidler. Uh, when I drove over here today with, with the General, uh, I said, hey, sir, I said, uh, this is what I got to introduce you. And he said, Todd, cut all that out. We're going to get this thing going. He, he, I think he's ready to speak. So, uh, without further ado, <laughs> <what's>, <laughs> maybe I have to go back to my notes now. But, uh, uh, sir, thanks for your leadership. Uh, thanks for being here with us today. Uh, honored to introduce you, and uh, I'll get out of the way and let him speak. <laughs> thanks. Sir. I'll tell you, the only thing important there is uh, my name is Bidler. I'm a U.S. Marine, and I'm here in Jacksonville with you. That's the only thing important. Uh, let me go over first uh, just a few things. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, that color guard did a good job. Yeah. I've done a little bit of that and marched in a room like this around a podium and, and whatnot. Uh, we're in good shape with young folks like that. Uh, and the young lady who sang the national anthem ought to make us all proud. Uh, pretty impressive. Um, and I'm very, very glad to be here with you today. Uh, I don't get out much. I don't get away from that that base down the street here, and it's great to be with the community. Uh, I've got a couple folks here in uniform with me today. Uh, Captain Nicholson is my aide. I've got uh, in the back of the room from MCI East, I've got Chief Warrant Officer 5 Dishner, and I've got Corporal Nicely here who works with us in the front office at the MEF headquarters. So we've got you surrounded uh, here this afternoon. Uh, I'll tell you what, I really appreciate being a part of this event. This is a significant event and uh, to recognize public safety professionals sounds like what we do down at the base. Public safety. We're in the business of public safety. We're in the business of protecting folks like you and your friends and family. But we got a little twist to that. We're also in the business of making it very unsafe for those that want to put us at risk. And I think that that's a balance, what we do and what, what you all do and what these uh, great folks here do. Uh, that we're going to recognize. I'd like to recognize everybody here. Each in your own way, you're a distinguished guest. Uh, it's great to see everybody here. Uh, some of you I've met, some of you uh, I know. I think you know that Brigadier General Castelvi, uh, who normally interacts as the Commanding General of Marine Corps Installations East, has been in Iraq for about six months now. And he's got about another three months to go before he comes back. So I think some of the interaction that we enjoy between the base and the community, uh, at the general officer level at least, has been a little set back for that. But I'm certainly glad to be out uh, from my job as the Marine Expeditionary Force CG to come out and meet with folks uh, here uh, in the community. You know, it's always good to be around people who have shared values uh, in the way we view things. Uh, good patriotic Americans that believe that there's something more important than self, that are willing to serve and willing to make a little bit of a sacrifice in that process. And that's who I'm surrounded with uh, here uh, in this, this group. We see things similarly, um, and I'm very, very pleased to be here with you. As I thought about what I would talk about here to you for a few minutes, uh, I thought about three things. I thought about service, sacrifice, and community. I mentioned two of those things. But let me just step through the way I view how those three things come together and certainly come together in an event uh, like this. My sense is that some people don't really understand what service is, is all about. I think that you know that less than 1% of Americans uh, serve this great nation uh, in this particular uniform. Uh, and I think that service is misunderstood uh, by some. In my estimation, service involves work 
done for somebody else. It involves work, typically hard work. It is typically work done by somebody for somebody else in a sense of duty, in a sense of obligation, in a sense that I have been fortunate enough to have something that I can share. And uh, I'll talk more about that. But this sense of obligation to duty, I think, sometimes is lost. In my view, service also involves some form of sacrifice. You know, the surrender of something prized or cherished or desirable. And that could be something as small as time. I sacrifice time, uh, which is precious to all of us, or something far more tangible than that. It may be risk to well-being, of which a number of you know about and are willing to make that risk as a part of your sacrifice and your service. And it could be something as, si as sizable as, as uh, putting at risk uh, one's own life. But I'm not sure that real service exists without some level of sacrifice. Uh, the fact of the matter is most people would like to serve but they haven't made that balance between service and sacrifice. They want the credit of serving without giving up anything in the process. And the folks that we're going to recognize here uh, this afternoon serve and sacrifice, and they've made that trade-off between those two. You know, I tell Marines uh, who serve, especially over the past several years, where they've served the nation when the nation was at war with risk to themselves and their families, that it's going to be mighty satisfying later in life to know that you serve the nation when the nation called. And there are not many people that can say that. And it's mighty satisfying to anybody who serves to know that they gave something of themselves uh, in that process. And the folks in this room don't have to worry about that. You know, you have given something of yourself to <coughs> serve and to serve and, and, and get the satisfaction from serving. Uh, and make the sacrifices in the process. And this gets to this idea of serving to affect the greater good, the common good, something above themselves. And the folks that we're going to recognize here in a little bit, they have earned our praise, they have earned our respect, and in doing so, they leave very, very satisfied in the process. They feel good about themselves, we feel good about them. And my sense is, that there's not much more satisfying in life than knowing that you served, you made some sacrifices, and you left things better for the common good. And that kind of is where I want to get to this idea of, of the common good and tie it all together. My feeling is that American culture, uh, for, for the general good, has emphasized the individual, individuality the uniqueness of each and individual person. And I think that's all in well and good, but certainly my team, the Marine Corps team, emphasizes that teamwork approach. We're not so much interested in what individuals do, we're what in, interested in what individuals do when they come together in a team. And we have some sayings on this in the Marine Corps. You know, it's never about you. You know, mission comes first. And uh, we also ask the question, what have you done for us lately? It's not what you did last week or last month or last year. What have you done for us lately? And, of course, you all know Semper Fidelis is a big part of what we are about. But I believe that everyone here understands the importance of teams and teamwork, you know, the idea of a team within teams or a team of teams. And we always seem to benefit here in Jacksonville from the tremendous teamwork uh, between the civilian community, the businesses, the leadership of the community, uh, the public safety officials uh, and the Marines and sailors that make up the second Marine Expeditionary Force and the 53,000 members of that team. You know, I, I'll tell you what, the Marine Corps is only as good as the communities that support the, the Marine Corps, and particularly here in Jacksonville, that support couldn't be better. It's unrelenting, the support that we get from the folks here. You know, America remains patriotic. Certainly that's the case here in Jacksonville. You and your families and friends set the standard for that. You know, this is the first time I've served at Camp Lejeune. You know, people look at me sometimes like a two-headed cow. You know, how in the world did you get to be the CG without ever having been stationed here at Camp Lejeune? Well, I spent uh, nine years in 2MEF. All of it was down in the other Carolina, 
at a place called Buford where we fly F-18s. Uh, but the bottom line is this community had a tremendous reputation before I got here uh, for the relationship, the community, the service. And my wife and I, Kim, have seen it in spades since we got here in July, and we very much appreciate it. I would tell you my, my real obligation to you here today is thanking you uh, for all you do for the sailors and Marines uh, here. I'll also uh, talk about some of the insights I have uh, coming out of U.S. Central Command. It was uh, strategy plans and policy for a man named Mattis uh, in the Middle East uh, for a couple years. Obviously, it didn't get that right. Uh, but the bottom line is, I would tell you that without folks like you making this great nation what it is, uh, even with all her faults, without America, without the United States, this world would be a very dark place. A very dark place. I've been, I've been to most of the locations that are on the front page of the news. I've thought about the problems at length, and I'm here to tell you again, without what we do, with all of our faults, this would be a very dark place. And I'd ask you never to forget that. I also want you to know that the men and women of America's forces, the Marines and sailors out at the base, draw strength from two primary forces. They draw strength from our heritage of service, that which we celebrated on the 10th of November of this, uh, this past month, and they draw it from the communities that support us like the one here. And I think this ceremony is typical of that. The relationship between those in this uniform, those of you in other uniforms here, and those of you that support everyone in uniform. That's what I have for you this afternoon. I look forward to the presentations. I look forward to talking to you uh, once the presentations are complete. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come out and talk to you. Uh, I thank you for the support. I thank uh, you and your families for all the support uh, that you offer. Thank you again, Semper Fidelis. Again, as I said earlier, I am not Scott Riggs. I got the text at 6.47 a.m. Lorette, I'm sick in the bed, so would you please read my speeches? So, I've had a couple hours to practice, so I hope the audience will be kind and I will do my very best. The goal of this ceremony is to recognize public safety professionals who, through their exceptional conduct of duties, have best served the citizens of Onslow County, its municipalities, Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune, and, <clears throat> and Marine Corps Air Station New River during the past year. The first award is for the 2014 Emergency Communication Professional of the Year. This public safety professional is a product of Jacksonville High School, holds certificates in emergency medical dispatching, emergency police dispatching, and emergency fire dispatching, and has earned certification from the APCO Institute as a communications training officer. Our winner took the initiative to create prepared lesson plans for training, has been responsible for the training, supervision, and evaluation of new dispatchers, and recently received a BS in Business Administration. Our award winner is always the first to volunteer for additional work assignments. DWI checking stations, national night out, cops on top, and running with the law. The 2014 Emergency Communications Professional of the Year has a track record of answering calls for service within two seconds, 99% of the time, and has been consistent in obtaining accurate information and providing that information within an average of 31 seconds. Her supervisor stated she has a positive attitude that carries over as a motivator to her other team members. She is a valued member of the Jacksonville Public Safety Communications team, helping set the course for the division. Please join me in congratulating the 2014 Emergency Communications Professional of the Year, telecommunicator for the City of Jacksonville Police Department, Ms. Lisa Moran.
Can well, I you're really not Scott Ray, because that's, uh, oh. she doesn't look like William, does she? No. Nope. <laughs> Here you go. Our second award is for the 2014 Firefighter Professional of the Year. The nomination form states our winner is an excellent leader that takes the responsibility and ensures that all his firefighters are their best through constant training. <clears throat> he is so passionate about firefighter safety and survival that he has volunteered to teach firefighter survival for the North Carolina Office of State Fire Marshal at the North Carolina Breathing Equipment School, which happens to be in my hometown, and it's Gaston College over there in Gastonia and Dallas, North Carolina. He also shares his knowledge throughout the county and on the base as a fire services instructor. He is a founding member of three specialty teams, the Honor Guard, Urban Search and Rescue Team, and the Water Rescue Team. He takes pride in all he does and encourages his fighter pot fighters to take pride and ownership of their department. He is also a well-respected citizen of Richlands, where he and his family resides. He brings his firefighting knowledge to the Richlands Volunteer Fire Department, where he serves as Deputy Chief. He coaches for the Summer Onslow County Baseball League and uses his skills as an emergency medical technician when he volunteers with the Richlands High School football team as a trainer. He also serves as an active adult leader for Boy Scout Troop 215 and is co-vice president of the Richlands Community Pool. Boy, I, hope that, I bet they wish you never leave. <laughs> he is certified as Firefighter 1 and 2 Hazardous Material Responder Level 1, Water Rescue Technician, and Fire Service Instructor. His 19 years of exemplary dedication to the department has earned him the 2013 Fire Officer of the Year Award with Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. Of course, I'm talking about Captain Robert Jackson with the City of Jacksonville. Please come up for your award. Our third award is for the 2014 Law Enforcement Professional of the Year. And I want the nominees in that category to know that our judges had a very difficult time selecting a winner. So all of you to, are to be uh, congratulated. And I'm honored to announce that this year's winner is Community Officer T.W. Sawyer with the Jacksonville Police Department. <laughs> A lifelong resident of Onslow County, T.J. Sawyer grew up in Swansboro community and graduated from Swansboro High School in 2000. He attended college at UNC Pembroke and got an AA in special education while working for his family business. T.J. joined the Jacksonville Fire Department as a patrol officer in July of 07. He was selected as community officer in 2010 and he holds the Intermediate Law Enforcement Certification. There are several heartwarming stories about what Officer Sawyer does for our community. Like when he encountered a mentally handicapped adult who contacted the police department when his bicycle was stolen and he was in danger of losing his job if he did not have transportation. Officer Sawyer immediately supported this individual by contacting the man's employer and explaining the situation. And then he transported the man to his workplace so that he could work his shift that day. 
and the Jacksonville Police Department's Community Service Division has a program using lost and found bicycles and donated parts to build new bicycles and give those to the needy. Officer Sawyer built a bicycle overnight and delivered it to that man the next morning. Earlier this year, Officer Sawyer received information from an officer on patrol about a possible homeless family that may be living in their vehicle in a parking lot of a retail store. Officer Sawyer called on his resources to assist the family in obtaining a hot meal, lodging, and later on employment. And we hear that the family is on their feet and doing well. And then while on duty last winter, he saw a woman walking and struggling with luggage and a two-year-old child. The woman's husband was at work and she was attempting to get to the shelter. He transported the woman, child, and their belongings to the shelter. He assisted with emergency lodging for that day and for long-term housing. And again, that family is on their feet and doing well. These examples of Officer Sawyer's work personify the concepts of community policing, partnership, prevention, and problem solving. His supervisor states, Officer Sawyer's knack for talking to PA people create partnerships in his personal and professional life. He utilizes those partnerships and networks to solve problems while on duty. His professionalism and community services and empathy for people prevents crime in our community. Congratulations to our 2014 Law Enforcement Professional of the Year, Community Officer T.J. Sawyer. Congratulations. Our fourth and final award is for the 2014 Emergency Medical Services Professional of the Year. William E. Camp has been with the Camp Lejeune Fire and Emergency Services Division since 1998. After completing his paramedic training, he was promoted to the position of firefighter paramedic in 2006. Last September, one of his co-workers began feeling discomfort in his chest. The co-worker tried to brush it off, but Mr. Camp was persistent and convinced his co-worker to have an EKG, which did show signs of a heart attack, which were later confirmed at the Naval Hospital. His co-worker and friend returned to work three months later. Had it not been for Mr. Camp's diligence, the outcome could have been much worse. In another instance, Mr. Camp was called to the scene of a person in cardiac arrest. The patient was revived on the scene and transported to the hospital. A week later, Mr. Camp discovered that the patient had been char discharged from the hospital three days after the cardiac arrest and no neurological damage. The emergency care he provided was paramount to the successful resuscitation of the patient. Mr. Camp continues to advance his EMS knowledge and skills as well as those as his crew. He also serves as den leader for his son's scout pack. All this, and he still finds time for golfing and beer brewing. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2014 Emergency Medical Services Professional of the Year, Firefighter Paramedic, William E. Camp. <laughs> Boy, I'm not getting any takers today. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us for our event. Thank you to the uh, police department and the city of Jacksonville for allowing us to use this wonderful space. And again, I want to mention our executive sponsors, Onslow Memorial Hospital, Sanders Ford, 
Gerber Collision and Glass, CenturyLink, and Jones Oslo Electric Membership Corporation. And then we also have our other associate and supporting sponsors on the back of your program. Um, I would like to ask the award winners to please come forward so we can get a group photo. Otherwise, the rest of you are adjourned, and thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas. Thank you.